Well, this is awkward. Today, we have a Trek Remedy in. It's just come here from another bike shop. Now, I don't really know exactly what bike shop it is, but we've been given a part of the quote they got given. First of all, charge them 25 pounds to actually just do the quote. I'm gonna read the quote out for you, actually, because it's quite interesting. Bike needs a new chain. Obviously, the reason I took it into the bike shop was because they broke their chain on a ride and needed it replaced. And derailed, your headset is loose. Dropper post isn't attached to cable. Can we reattach it? Customer has brought in replacement front pads should have new rear pads in already. And they did, they brought in some new pads. That's okay. So that's the well, the request, if you like, that the customer asked the bike shop to do. So the response from the bike shop was this. Bike needs a lot of work. Pivot bearings look cooked. Rear tire is on backwards. BB is bad may need to call customer to explain all the work that will be needed before we do anything. I've put derailleur on account just in case. And then finally, bike has been fully checked over. We would require full frame wheel, bottom bracket and headset bearings, new bushings for the rear shock, full brake service, derailleur replaced, new dropper cable installed, both fork and shock required to be sent away to be fully serviced. We do not deem this bike to be safe to ride in the condition it is customer made aware and quoted a price of 977 pounds dependent on time this bike came to us and they went i don't think there's much wrong with it so let's take a look now when a bike like this comes in i think nearly every bike shop would run through what they call an m check an m check is just to run through the rear axle through to the front axle in like an m shape that you're checking all the parts as you go it's just a nice logical way of doing things if we take a look at the rear drivetrain obviously this is mission it's jockey wheels at the moment but the rest of the cassette actually looks in really good condition i can't see any signs there of that mushroomy effect that we talked about in one of the previous videos it all looks pretty solid so the back wheel also pretty solid the axle was a little bit loose but all i've done here is just tighten up the quick release adapter it's absolutely fine the rear pads definitely need to change but the brakes are working when it comes to looking at the suspension one of the best ways to do this is put your knee on the back wheel and grab the bike around here if you grab it by here all you'll feel is all this slop but just lifting this and yeah i can definitely feel some knocking and if i go around and try to feel where that knocking comes from it's really obvious that it's from here the two shock bushings when it comes to the bottom bracket and it's not even making much of a grumbling noise at all it's actually spinning really nicely what i can see though is that the preload adjuster is right at the very end of its threads and it's missing a spacer in there as well. So I think the little bit of play that they can feel is because the spacers haven't been installed properly. Seat post is quite interesting because Summit On's gone on here and they think this is all loose and broken. What I can actually see is this top cap has just come unscrewed. So we will clean all that out and reattach that. When it came to the headset, there is just the tiniest amount of play. You can just feel that. That's quite an easy job to do, especially on a mountain bike. Both brakes have got a really good bike point, no problem there at all. Now, the forks actually feel okay, you know, but the rear shock is definitely cooked. So what happens with this, when we try and put some pressure on it, you can just see it gets to about this part of the travel and you can hear the squishiness. This, shock has definitely failed at some point and that shock definitely needs some attention but it doesn't need to be sent away we can do that in our suspension room just here it's actually a pretty easy job on these super deluxe shocks as well that's my hunch let's see if i'm right let's get it in the stand start taking things apart front wheel off amazingly these bearings are spinning beautifully even if they're making a right racket but bizarrely they're not actually wobbling around that much. I suspect this bike's probably been pressure washed quite a lot and washed all the grease out of. So we need to do a fairly cheap job on this bike because I think it was like a 14, 15 year old guy came in with his mum. So we need to keep the price down. So if we can, we'll just try and re-grease these. But the back wheel actually seems okay. I think this one's got a little bit of wear in it. You can just about feel a tiny little bit of play there. But other than that, it's spinning really well. give this a wipe here's the axle you can see the preload bolt is all the way out there's a fair bit of rotation damage here on the drive side but it's quite minor i can only just about feel the minus the smallest of edges hopefully that's been caused mostly by that preload adjuster being wrong the rest of the bottom bracket actually feels pretty good always worth getting the shock out because there I can clearly see that's where all that play is coming from 
but there's also some sign here of wear and tear around the shaft. This starts to get quite dangerous because once you've got scratches in here, you're just enough for some air to pass through from these air seals here. So I think we might service this shock for this customer and use it, put it onto our pay it forward account. So I think it's been jet washed to within an inch of its life, but we might have just caught it at an okay time. I think there's still a pretty big build down the line, but we can probably delay it a little bit, I think. So this is the problem with the headset then. This whole assembly wasn't tightened down properly. You can see why, because this whole bolt just sheared off really, really easily. Uh, and no surprise, you could look at the amount of corrosion and stuff going on in there. But it's okay, we can, uh, we can replace that easily enough. Well, that's our upper headset bearing. I've definitely seen better, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not wobbling loose at all. That's actually running okay. And again, the fact it even came out in one piece is normally quite good. When they're really shot, they normally just come out in pieces on the floor. So again, dirty, but not as bad as they were making out. Let's get all this cleaned up. Got the headset out and cleaned up. Do you know what? I think you probably could have got away with another summer on these maybe. They're okay, I've seen a whole lot worse, but I do have spares here. The bottom one here is about 12.99. The top one here is about £7.50. I've got them here, I've come this far. I feel like I might as well just replace those. The shock, I've thought about it now and I'm definitely gonna redo this. We're gonna go next door to the suspension room and show you how we completely strip down and rebuild a RockShox Deluxe Reactive. The one the concern I do have more than anything else is probably these axles I feel like we could probably just get a few more months of running out of them it won't be ideal it won't be pretty but i think we can make that work pivot bearings are actually in really really good condition which is amazing well there's only about 180 psi in there should be more like 250 Before everyone freaks out about me throwing this down a sink, this is actually a specially made sink that drains into a big oil drum, which you then go and get recycled, so don't panic. Now to all you suspension experts out there, I'm gonna to have to stress that we are doing a quick fix, super cheap job, just try and get this poor lad running again. We're definitely, if you brought your shock in for a service, we would be stripping this thing in town to its entirety, this bushing assembly would be off, all these shims would be out as well, but remember, we're just trying to get this lad riding again safely, so we're just gonna refill this up with oil and just replace the thing that's failed, which is this IFPO ring. Cameraman just had to go home, so the rest of this shop build is gonna be done with me and you and a GoPro. Here we go. If you enjoyed this video so far, why not hit that subscribe button? It always helps the channel. It means that we can make more exciting content for you guys to enjoy. Now, on with this particular build. When I was doing this particular project, it really reminded me about one of those essential skills of being a mechanic, and that is 
really making sure that you listen and empathize with your customer because as mechanics i think we always want to make something excellent we want to give someone back to someone that is better than it was when it was new do our finest work and be excellent however it doesn't always suit the customer because we don't know what their situation is. They might have just had an expensive car bill come in or just bills in general, whatever it is. And all of a sudden they just want to ride their bike and this is an extra cost they weren't expecting. They just need their bike to be rideable. And that's what we've had to try and do to deliver this. So I'll run you through the work that we've done. Now, obviously we had to repair the mech and the chain. That was the bulk of the, the cost on this. And we definitely wanted to keep it to spec or that GX Eagle. We could have gone down a spec level, but the cost savings are fairly negligible, really. After that, looking at the entire bike, it was really evident this bike has been jet washed to an inch of its life, but it hasn't actually done that many miles. So even though all the grease had been washed out the bearings, it didn't look like they'd actually encountered that much wear. So I suspect that this bike is probably ridden at like a bike park and things like that, where it's not actually seeing many miles, even though it's getting dirty and washed regularly. So what we've done is we've taken apart the hub, nearly everything in there was okay. We just changed one bearing. The hub caps were a little bit tricky to get off. Just as we'd hoped when we put the chain on and we've test ridden it as well, everything worked okay. I was really worried there'd be too much wear on the cassette, but actually it's pedaling just fine, which is like a big sigh of relief. When it came to the bottom bracket, we obviously saw that wear and tear on the actual axle itself. There's not much we can do about it, but it was just at that point where we could probably just get away with it. If there's a road bike, I would definitely be changing it because it's gonna creak and creak and creak. And this will probably creak at some point, but right now it's spinning, it's fairly solid. There was a spacer missing on the non-drive side. We put that back here so the preload adjuster is right. We took the seals off the inside of the bearings, put them through the sonic cleaner, and then put a whole load of grease in there as well. So these are now spinning okay, and there's no play in there either. So it's not ideal. It will probably creak in the future, but for now it's working. It's a pretty solid platform. One of the biggest problems was all that play in the rear suspension. Now, when we showed you initially, you could literally put your leg on this and you could see everything move. So most of that was coming from this bushing. And now we've done that bushing, we can just feel there's a tiny little bit of play on this bearing here. And it would be nice to do that. The rest of them all look like they're in really good condition, but that was not within the remit of this work. So we haven't touched it. We did, however, do the rear shock. I had to do it. Like my conscience has got the better of me. So we've used our pay it forward fund. So customers here often give us little tips and sort of pay it forward for situations like this when someone's really got a problem they need to get solved. So we've dipped into the pay it forward fund and we've given that shock a service because if that wasn't touched, that would be a very, very expensive fix uh, in the future. And that would be quite terrifying. So I'm really, really glad that we've done that. And if you guys want to contribute to that pay it forward fund, you can use that super thanks button down below. All that just goes into a little file. We have a little notebook behind the till and when we need to dip into it for situations like this. We'll let you know when we do. When it came to the dropper post, this actually came out really easily. Quick service, loads of grease. We a little bit tricky getting a cable through, but we managed to get that working okay. And now the dropper post is functioning. That's all good. Headset was a similar issue as you saw. I think what happened here was that they knew that something was loose and they just kept tightening this top bolt to try and compress it. That's not the way to tighten a headset. As a result, that really soft aluminium bolt on the, on the Hope thing, as you saw, just completely sheared off. So we've pulled that back together again, two new bearings, a new um, top cap, which is free of charge. We have these knocking around the workshop. If they want to change it back to the Hope one in the future, they can. We had to push the star nut all the way through and put a new star nut in as well. The two brakes had a really, really good clean. We put new pads in that the customer supplied on the front brake. The actual rotors are in really good condition. Um, so and the brakes are feeling absolutely fine. On the front wheel, those bearings were dry as anything, but they are completely solid. Um, by the time we put some new grease in there, they're absolutely fine. That is the consequence of jet washing. You just literally power wash all the grease out and it only takes a few miles after that to like get really, really bad wear and tear. So we're definitely sending this rider along with some strong advice to try and avoid the pressure washing as much as possible. Now, going forward, I absolutely totally agree that this bike was not perfect. And the original quote from that other bike shop was probably about spot on for all the things that probably should be done including the fork service. Fork service doesn't need to be um, sent away to be done. Most bike shops should be able to do um, a 50 pound basic lower leg service. That is not something that really needs to be sent away. The shock service that you saw us do is probably a little bit more technical and there's only a few places that might be doing things like that. The pivot bearings, I think oh, that's something that you really need to notify the customer they should be prepared for because that is quite a big job. Um, the actual labor cost, et cetera, involved. So, you want to know what our bill came to? Well, the rear mech and the chain was the bulk of that cost. After that, it was about £35 worth of little parts like shift cables and bearings and 
shock bushings, that sort of thing. There's about three hours of labor to do the whole thing and job done. Less than half the price of what the original shop quoted. Rideable again for at least the summer, but a little warning that there's probably a slightly bigger bill a bit further down the line. Okay, let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is a really, really tricky one. It's gonna fire you up in the comments. There's probably no right or wrong answer at all, but did we do the right thing? <laughs>